is your home assistant working? Well, after the problems I had over the weekend, I decided to create this video. And this video will help you to stay on top of the possible issues inside your home assistant. We'll start in a couple of seconds. I've mentioned it on Twitter that last weekend I had issues with one of my setups. This one was at the summer house. The problem was the SD card. It was failing, but I did manage to grab a couple of backups and I decided to restore it. For the restore, I didn't just swap out the SD card or use the NVMe, because yes, that case, Pyraman case, also has the NVMe dock. Instead, I decided to completely replace the hardware and to go with the Zima board. The problem with the Zima board was that I didn't have a spare keyboard, I didn't have a spare mouse, I didn't have a USB stick, and I also didn't have HDMI cable. So what I was hoping for is to just plug in the power, plug in the Ethernet, hope that this device will work at different network, and that I would be able to load the backup. Actually, at the end, and it took some fiddling, I was able to do so. But the problem there was, of course, that this was a backup from a couple of weeks ago, and I changed hardware, so there were some issues I had to fix. So, for example, one of the issues was this invalid configuration. This is probably the simplest error to fix. It says that we have integration that could not be set up. Of course, since this is not a Raspberry Pi, we do not have GPIOs that were previously used with the Raspberry Pi cooling. I had it previously set up in a way that when the CPU temperature reaches above 49 degrees, the cooler starts, works for a couple of minutes, then it shuts down, waits again for the temperature to rise, and it cycles like that. It was working great with Raspberry Pi, but hence this is not a Raspberry Pi. The easiest way to fix this error is to go to your configuration file and either delete it or comment it out. And that means that I can delete this part here, it will not be missed, restart the system and everything will be fixed. But these are the simple errors. There are some other errors that you can also easily fix inside your home assistant. For example, if you have a repair option, unknown entities used in restock mosquito tablets. This is the automation that is currently not working, or it will probably never work again, because I do not have those mosquito repellents anymore. So what I need to do is go to automations and just delete the automations that are in question here. Since my automations in this system are located inside YAML files, they are not controlled by the UI, I have to do it once again by hand. But if this would be, for example, UI automation, I could just click on edit automation and fix it here. Instead, let's go to Visual Studio Code. And here I have automation that is looking at the state of the mosquito repellents and the tablets, if they're expired or not. We just need to either delete this automation or rename it. And this error is fixed. Same applies to this radiation alert. If we click on edit automation, we can see that this sensor is missing. We do not have this sensor Geiger counter because yes, once again, this sensor is offline. I have to fix it. So I have to go to Visual Studio Code, search for automation, this one here, radiation high, and either once again delete it or rename it. Those repairs are still here because we've done the changes in the YAML. So in order for us to clear them out from here, we go to developer tools, load either all YAML configuration or just click on automations. And in a couple of seconds, those errors here should be gone. The next errors that are also easy to fix are the errors here unknown entities used in overview. That means that we have a lot of entities inside our UI that are not enabled or don't exist anymore in our system. For example, this is the list here. If we click on edit dashboard, they are located here. The easiest fix, unless you can of course fix that this entity is not existing anymore, is just to delete those four entities here. Click on done and our system is currently error free. Or is it? We do not have any immediate errors, either available in notifications or inside repairs, but that doesn't mean that we do not have a lot of errors. And my system, this system here, really has a lot of errors. If you go and check on my debug page, where I keep the system stats, we can see that I currently have 14,700 warnings and 2,615 errors. And this is only from the time the system was booted. So in the last couple of days, this is what I have in my log files. But once again, if everything is working for you, if all the automations are available, if you do receive responses from your system, you do not have to worry. There are some errors, there are some timeouts that can result in the log errors or log warnings. 
To be safe, once in a while you should go in the system settings and check on your logs. Like this. System, logs, and see what errors do you have here. For example, this one here. Yes, of course, because I've changed my network settings and this is not the IP range I have, this is error that is very easy to fix. And by fixing this error, I will also be fixing some other errors because these two are tied together. So take your time and slowly go through the Home Assistant core log file. But while you're already here, when was the last time that you checked some other system logs? For example, supervisor log. For that, let's go to supervisor and see if we have any warnings or errors here. In my case, on my system, I only have this warning here, and this is the warning that the Freegate has full access. Unfortunately, Freegate add-on also needs full access, so I have to ignore this error every time I see it inside my log file. And besides that, everything else in the supervisor logs is okay. But there are still two things that I have installed in my system that help me keep my system up to date, clear, working, and with as little errors or warnings as possible. Those are two add-ons. One is the Hacks or Home Assistant Community Store add-on or integration, and the other one is Frank's Spook. So let's check the first one. If we go to the Settings, Integrations, click on Watchman, you see that we have one service with three entities. The last update of the Watchman was four minutes ago. Missing entities are 126 entities and missing services is zero. And if we want to see all the entities that are missing or services that are missing, we have to go to either file editor or once again Visual Studio Code, search for the Watchman report file, click on it, and you will have a list of everything that is either unavailable or missing inside your home assistant. For example, I do not have HP DeskJet anymore, so I have to remove those automations. Then also I'm missing low battery sensor, I'm missing Skybox players online automations, I'm missing Sonos speakers, etc, etc. By using this Watchman integration, it allows you to quickly browse to the written reports that you can save locally, check everything, and then fix errors that you can fix. Of course, some of the entities are not available 100% of the time. There are some integrations, for example, earthquake sensor, that only give you data when there is actual earthquake. When there is no earthquake, it doesn't show you a zero as a state of the sensor, it is just not available. So you have to keep that in mind when you are fixing your errors. This Watchman Hex integration is very easy to install, very easy to use, it does all the things automatically, but you can also run it through Actions. Let's go to Developer Tools, Actions, type Watchman, Reports, and here you can force configuration parsing, it is off by default, send report as a notification, cut it if it's too big, and also, by default it is enabled, you can disable creation of the file inside configuration folder. Click on perform action, and this should be it. Here is what we have inside notifications, and of course we still have that file in the configuration folder. But besides that, Frank has created one additional awesome integration, and that one is called Spook. I will not be going into details about everything that Spook can do, but one of the things it does perfectly is also match the functionality of the Watchman. Let's go to Settings, Integration, click on Spook, three devices with 62 entities. We have information about Home Assistant, these are the statistics about our system. We can here reload or restart Home Assistant, and we have information about how many of each of those devices or device types or integration types we have in our system. For example, areas we have 18, covers 0, fans 1, Input numbers 8, scripts 25, sensors 1877, etc, etc. Then we have information about Home Assistant Cloud. On this system I do not have Home Assistant Cloud active, but on this other system I do have. This smart speaker, I'm not telling the name, is turned off, state reporting is on, assistant from Google is on, state reporting is on, and also we have remote access. And the last thing or last line is information about repairs. Issue was updated 17 hours ago. We can ignore all or unignore all. We have one active issue, three ignored issues or total four issues. Let me click on unignore all. And now we see that we have four errors reporting inside repairs by Spook. Entities missing. Unknown group members in present simulation. This repository was removed, but it is still working for me, so I'm keeping it. 
and this add-on failed to start at boot. This is the Samba backup. Each issue has its own path on how you can fix them. For example, this one. Before I click on the link, let me just copy this here. And then we will try to find it in dashboards. Not everything is easy to find, so that's why we can also use some advanced functionality, which is actually not that advanced, but maybe you just didn't think of it. Click on three dots, click on raw configuration editor, type in control F, paste the sensor name and search for it. It looks like while the system is reporting that we are missing the entity, we actually are not missing it. That's why we can go back, settings and just ignore this one. For the repository removed, you can click on ignore or you can go to hacks panel and uninstall it. But as I said, I will not be doing that since for me this is still currently working. The problem is that new users cannot get the API because Google is blocking it. So that's why this is shutting down and the API will be shutting down in June. Yeah, you can uninstall it or you can use this integration while it still lasts. So for me, this is fixed. I'll just ignore the problem. And that is how you easily go through each of the repaired issues, either that are automatically recognized by Home Assistant or by using Watchman and you can clear a lot of the errors that you have in your system. Of course, one of the things that you really need to have is you need to have backup of your system. I'm not talking here about plain old backup of the system on the system, because if the drive gets corrupted, you will be also losing your backup files. This is, for example, why the backups from this location or from this instant are kept at four location. This system, keeping it on Synology, keeping it on a Home Assistant Cloud, Google Drive and yeah, Synology DSM, which is actually a bit different device than this one here, no matter what other option you have. But I really do recommend that you always keep automatic backup somewhere safe outside of your Home Assistant instance. If some of you want to say that, yeah, it's my fault that a Raspberry Pi has failed or SD card has failed inside Raspberry Pi. Yes, I know that. But the biggest issue for me is that that same system had the NVMe drive and that NVMe drive failed first. That's why I had SD card because I didn't have spare NVMe drive. So I used SD card to restore the system on it and I decided not to invest in NVMe because I couldn't comprehend that the Kingston NVMe drive could fail in less than one year of use. So even if you think that you know something, there is a way on how the life can smack you on the back of your head. And while you did take precaution, don't forget the rule 3, 2, 1 in terms of backup. And that's why you always need to have one backup somewhere else in a safe place, not at your site. OK, so we checked the log files, we've seen the persistent notifications, we've seen the repairs, we've seen the spook and also Watchmen. But what else can you do to improve your system? The errors that you see sometimes with Watchmen are not the errors that will break your system. The system will be working, everything will be OK besides that one, two, three tiny thing that you do not use that much or that often. But there is also one hidden gem that can help you improve on your system. And that is by going into the settings. System, repairs, we know about those two repairs. Click on three dots and click on integration startup times. These integration startup times can help you debug your system. By that, I mean, check out the times. The normal boot up times or normal startup times, as you can see from the integrations page are zero seconds, maybe one second, maybe two seconds. 120 seconds mean that something is wrong. And if I look at the integration startup time, I know that these two really do have problems. This one will have a problem in the future, and I'm not sure what's going on with the other integrations. For example, local loop data and sensor. I do not have any issue in the spook. I didn't see any issue in the watchman, but by looking at the name, I know what is the problem here. My loop data and sensor is offline and the integration is trying to connect for two minutes. And this means that the system is waiting for two minutes for it to be connected. Same applies to the Reolink, but that's currently my issue. I'm recording a new Reolink video that should be released this week and I have a bit of issue with that. But by the time you see the next video, also this week, everything will be fixed. I would call this more of a feature than a current issue. While at the end it is a big issue since I will have to redo all of the cameras. The ones that are previously installed, the ones that 
I am currently installing or have installed a couple of days ago. And also, yeah, everything stopped working. But this is easy fix since I know where the problem is. And the problem is not inside Home Assistant. The problem is setup of the Reoli cameras. That's why you should really visit your integration startup page and see what your system has to say what are the biggest problems or the integrations that are creating slow startup times. This will depend on the system. As you can see, three systems and each system has its own issues. Some of them are the same, others are different. But also don't forget, this is a smart home, this is your hobby, this is something that you create for yourself, your family members, your friends to have and enjoy. And this is not a second job, this is not something that you have to do and this is not something that should put pressure on you. And that's why you can spend some time on fixing things, but also on the other hand, don't make that your second day job. If everything is working, don't fix it. Should I fix or ignore log errors? I've decided to ignore them. If everything is working fine, then everything is fine and I do not care if the house is burning down or not. I really do hope that you did find this video interesting and also that I reminded you of some of the things that you can do to improve on your system. Responsiveness, startup times, fix errors, etc, etc. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. and It really, really means a lot to me, but it also helps with those strange YouTube algorithms. If you have any kind of a comment, question, suggestion, idea or something else, you can always drop them down in a comment section below. As I mentioned, there will be additional video this week because I have to clear up the backlog of the items I received for testing and review. And it looks like for the next couple of weeks or months or years, I will be clearing up the backlog. One video per week will be about Home Assistant, integrations, hack components, automations, etc, etc. And the other video will be about various devices, gadgets that I received for the testing purposes. And before I end up the video, as always, I want to say thanks to those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Taxes unfortunately do apply. Or as always, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.